Gates. My name is Sergeant First Class Gates. Uh, I'm the State Resiliency Coordinator. What I'm about to do is teach you or give you a, an introduction to a 24-hour class. All right? Resiliency is a 24-hour class that we have to go through. I'm going to give you guys about 30 minutes. All right, so I'm just going to touch on different things. What I want I want you guys to get out of this is is your emotions are what drive your decisions, and you can't control your emotions. All right, I was in the same seat that you guys were in uh, back in '09. Just got back from Iraq. All right, I went to the first yellow ribbon that they had. It wasn't near this good. I mean, we were in the hotel, we had uh, about four classes. You guys have like 25 classes to choose from. Um, we've really come around. I, I actually work now for the reintegration office. Um, I've, I'm a, on my M day side, I'm with the 773rd MP Battalion. And when I deployed, I was with the 2228th, and we deployed to Iraq. Uh, I've been doing this, the resiliency, for about a year now and it's something that if if I'd have known about when I first got back from Iraq it would have answered a lot of questions all right um, you guys would be running into emotions and feelings that are new to y'all right readjusting to coming back you guys have been gone you've been in the same mindset for the last year like you said hyper vigilant uh, always on guard but now you're gonna come back home and, and your family's gonna want you to relax and it's gonna be tough to do all right, resiliency to me is, is the key to re-interacting with your family, all right? It teaches you how to, instead of blowing up on somebody, how to stop and think why you're thinking or why you're feeling the way you are. Um, we all act differently to different situations. And now as you guys come back, you guys are gonna act differently than you would have a year ago, all right? Because you guys are different people. Combat changes people. Whether you want it to or not, it's gonna change you, all right? All right, Miss, you will learn the seven skills. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna introduce you guys to seven skills of resiliency. I don't have all, I wish I had the time to teach you guys this because this is really life changing, all right? Uh, the seven skills will also develop your ability to understand your own thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and those of others. All right? If you understand yourself, you're going to understand other people also. If you know how to figure yourself out, you'll know how to figure them out. All right? Resiliency. Good way to explain resiliency. You take an egg and you take a tennis ball. You drop them. Which one's the resilient one? The one that bounces back. All right? You're going to fall. You're going to have problems. You're going to you're going to fail. What you need to do is understand that that's that's okay. That's expected. Now I got to get back up and bounce back. All right. All right. First one is this is the uh, the pyramid that we go through. ATC. The thoughts activating event consequences and thoughts. Uh, avoid thinking traps, detect icebergs, problem solving. I'll go over all of these, all right? I don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. ATC. What is an activating event? Activating event is anything. Something happens. You got up this morning, and when you were walking to the bathroom, you tripped because the lights were out. You didn't see the, the flip-flops in the floor, and you fell down. What, what was your initial thought? What was the first thing that went through your mind? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Right? <laughs> Seriously, that's not. I mean, you walk and you trip, you, you know, you can get pissed, all right? It leads to consequences. What did you do? Son of a bitch, you kicked the dang flip flops, didn't you? But now you woke up your family, or you, you know, your, your wife and your child were in there too, and they wake up and say, what's going on? Because you're throwing a fit because you tripped over your flip flop. All right? <laughs> Activating event. Something that happens triggers your thoughts, your initial thought, and that leads to consequences, okay? What you guys need to do is understand this. Anything that happens to y'all is an activating event. So your first initial thought, stop for a second and say, you know what, is that, is that a normal thought for me to have? You guys aren't gonna have normal thoughts right now, all right? You guys coming back, it's, it's gonna be different. I've been there, I've done that. It's all different now. You're going to think different, okay? 
So just take a little time and say, you know what? Before I run into my consequences of what I'm thinking, is it going to be right? We're always looking for the positive side, right? Optimism breeds optimism. Positive thoughts breed positive actions, right? <coughs> All right. ATC helps build self-awareness. If you know when something happens, what your thoughts are, and what the consequences are going to be, it brings self-awareness to you. You know more about you. All right? Identify the heat of the moment thought about the activating event and consequences of those thoughts so you can be in greater control of your emotions and reactions. Everybody understand that? It makes sense. Trust me. This is, this is life-changing if I could give you the whole thing. Anyways, all right, you're activating the thought, like I said, is triggering an event. All right? And it can be negative or it can be positive. I mean, you, can, you do have positive events. Like, I just graduated from uh, Grantham University. I got my bachelor's degree. That's an activating event for me. All right? My emotion, you know, my, my first thought was, I'm the bomb, you know? I, I, I did something, right? And I, I'm 47 years old and I just got a degree. My son's 22, he's still working on him. You know, so uh, he, he makes fun of me. But anyways, the activating of the consequences of emotions are, okay, I'm happy. I'm happy that I, that I got my degree, okay? And my reactions are, it, it helps me to get a better job in, in, or a better position in my job, all right? But that's, what I'm saying is that there's positive and negative uh, activating events. All right, so you have a fight. You get home, and you have a fight with your wife, an argument. Not a fight, an argument. All right? First thing you think is, she never listens to what I have to say. Right? All right, you're, you're going to be frustrated and are angry, right? That's your first initial emotion is frustration and anger. <clears throat> What's your reaction going to be? Hopefully it's not going to be physical. All right. We don't want to get physical, but you've got to understand why you guys are feeling like this. What is leading to this? You have your activating event, it brings on your initial thought, and then your emotions and reactions, and then it goes back to another thought. It's a chain reaction. So if you have a horrible thought, you know, like, this, she effing hates me, right? So then your emotion is... You know, screw her, I don't need her, I'm not, I don't need this. And you pack your stuff and you leave. Right? It's negative. You don't, it's not necessary, you're overreacting. Alright? Alright, emotions are feelings that we usually accompany by physiological behavior. How many people have gotten mad and your face turns red and you feel heat? And you faint, right? Or you get scared and you feel tingled? Right? Because emotions is, is it leads to a physio, physiological effect. <clears throat> All right. Uh, activating. What you want to learn from the uh, ATC is to separate activating events and our thoughts about it and the consequences. So you can change it from a negative activating event or consequence to a positive. All right? We want to stop the cycle and switch it to positive. Aristotle says anyone can get angry, that is easy, but to get angry with the right person to the right extent at the right time for the right reason and in the right way is no longer easy. And it's not something that anyone can do. All right, thinking traps. What are thinking traps? Thinking traps are what you tend to what you tend to fall into when something happens thinking traps are what you what you normally fall into right it's like oh yeah here we go again you know what i'm saying uh you identify the thinking traps that you tend to fall into so you can correct the thinking in the moment and avoid the traps in the future effective leadership requires you to avoid thinking traps optimal performance requires you to avoid bless you all right these are the common thinking traps when you jump to conclusions. Something happens, all right, and you jump to conclusions. Oh, here we go again, 
right? It's the same old thing. Mind reading. When something happens, your, your spouse says something, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're going to do, right? You're mind reading. You don't want to do that. Then it's either me, me, me. You know, it's, whenever something happens, it's always my fault. It's, I'm the reason this is happening. No. Or them, them, them. It's always somebody else's fault when something happens. Always, always, always. You see where we're going with this? Those last two, always, 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 and everything, 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 is the poor me. All right? That's what they call the, the fatal negatives. All right? If you start finding yourselves with this, where you're, this is always happening, it's always happening, it's always happening, or this is, everything is included in the problems, you need to stop and get some help. All right? All right. We already went over this. You're going to start finding, as you guys get back, that you're going to, if you stop and you think about, you know, when something happens, stop and think about it. Say, okay, well, this is, this is an activating event. What's your initial thought? All right, good or bad? Stop and change it and see where your uh, emotions and reactions lead you for your consequence. Icebergs. Icebergs are what we believe. Right? It's, it's what's kind of how you've been brought up. Uh, icebergs help you with self-awareness also. It, it shows you that um, what you believe down, you know what, what's an iceberg? Okay, You've got something on top, but you've got a whole lot more underneath that you can't see. All right, So an iceberg for y'all would be something like... Um, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to think of one for me. Uh, say you, you're in a room and um, a child is in there and he's acting up. I'd say there's a child in this room and he's acting up and you're trying to watch this, right? And you get aggravated because you think children should be more respectful than that, right? Well, that's an iceberg for y'all. That's the way you've been brought up and the way you believe. The person that is... The parent to that child might not feel the same way. They might not have been brought up like that. They might have been brought up where the child can do whatever he wants and he expresses himself, right? So your iceberg is going to cause conflict with this other person. Do you all understand? Identifying icebergs allows you to reinforce and change them. Now, if, if that's an activating event that that child over there is, is pissing you off because you're trying to watch this and he's acting up, it may cause you to get up and go over and say something. Then they may react negatively towards you and then you have a, an argument or a fight, right? It can be avoided and it should be avoided. Leaders need to know what pushes their buttons so they can stay in control. Great leaders stay in control under tough circumstances, right? You gotta know what your icebergs are. You gotta know how to control your icebergs. Heat of the moment thoughts are on the surface of our awareness, we can easily tune into them. Your icebergs are something that you, that's you, that's part of you. It's something that you automatically go to, all right? Uh, iceberg beliefs are core values. It's what you aspire to, the core beliefs. What you believe to be true of yourself, others, and the world, right? Say, for the most part, people are good at heart. Do you all believe that, or do you believe for the most part, people will try and take advantage of you if they can. You see what I'm saying? Those are icebergs. It's how you feel and how you've been brought up. Examples of some icebergs. I am strong. People can be trusted. How many of y'all believe people can be trusted? There's not many people that believe that. Really. Because why? You've been taken advantage of before at one time or another. You know? Or your parents have taught you. Trust them, but not too much. You know what I'm saying? That way they can't take advantage of you. The world is a dangerous place. We all know it is, or it can be. All right? Family comes first. That's a big one for, for most of us. Family comes first. That's a big iceberg for everybody. Going to, this, is, this is one you all need to think about. Going to a counselor means you're not a real soldier. Back in the past, 
In the old days, you didn't go seek help. If you did, you were weak, right? We're trying to get away from that. If you all come back from Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever y'all went and you have issues and you know you have issues, does it make you a weaker person to stand up and ask for help? Y'all think? No, it doesn't. I was there. I, I had to go see a counselor. Because when we got back, uh, about a month after we got back, one of my soldiers, that's a platoon sergeant, one of my soldiers was putting up a flagpole at his mom's house, and the flagpole fell over and hit a power line and electrocuted him and killed him. This is one of my best soldiers over there. He did everything I asked him to, and, I mean, a lot of stuff, I, I just didn't have to worry about it. And then when we got back, something that was completely out of my control took him away. So I had a hard time dealing with that, and I had, I had to go see a counselor for it. Don't be afraid to go get help, guys. It, I mean, it, it is what it is. If you feel like you need help, get help. It's out here. This is what we're all here to do, is to teach you that we have help. And we can give it to you. All right? This resiliency stuff tries to teach you how to be a little bit stronger and how to be more resilient. Uh, problem solving. You know, you're going to run into things. This one here is a, is a, is a big uh, process. This takes a lot of time to teach. I'm just going to go over it real briefly. Problem solving helps you to build mental agility. If you, know how to, if you know how to use this system and solve problems, it makes you stronger in the mind, all right? Uh, you, can first have, you first have to understand a problem before you can effectively solve it. How many of you believe that? I mean, you have to know what's wrong before you can solve the problem. Being a successful soldier requires that you are able to pro uh, solve problems effectively without getting bogged down in the habits of thinking. Your thinking traps and your icebergs will deter you of solving problems effectively. Why? Because it's what you guys believe, it's what you'll fall back to every time. When something happens and you're trying to figure out a problem, you're going to go back to your beliefs, right? What's right and wrong to you? But it might not, it might not be the effective way to come up with a good answer. Right? The goals. The goal is to include any critical information you miss so that you can understand the problem and focus on solution strategies. That's what this teaches you is how to, all right, look at the whole problem that you've come up with, right, and how to kind of dissect it. And like I said, this, this is a process. This is not something that you do just like this. Uh, and it takes work. It takes practice to be able to solve problems like this. <clears throat> Focus on thoughts of why the problem happened. <coughs> Identify the contributing factors that have caused the problem through critical questions and evidence. So you've got to look at the good side and the bad side. Your side and possibly somebody else's view of it. And you actually get somebody else involved. Somebody that you're close to or somebody that you know and say, hey, this is what I've come up with. What do you think? And you're going to take their... Um, version of it and kind of work it with yours and come up with a solution. It might be, you might come up with the same solution to that problem that you had originally thought of, or you might look at somebody else's view and say, you know what, maybe I should try this. All right, putting it in perspective, what, is, what does that mean? Making it look like it really is. Is it really as bad as you're thinking it is? And I put it in perspective helps to build optimism. And what does optimism do? Optimism breeds optimism. All right? If, if, if you stay focused on the good, good comes out of it. If you stay focused on the bad and the negative, that's what you're going to get out of it. All right? Cat catastrophizing. And this is the first time I've ever seen this word when I went through this class. Catastrophizing. What does that mean? Anybody have any idea what that means? When you take something, something negative, and you just spin it way out of control, all right? That's called catastrophizing. Uh, it's when you waste critical energy rum ruminating about an irrational worst case outcome situation which prevents you from taking a purposeful action. The goal of uh, putting it into perspective is to lower anxiety. 
this is where you guys, when you start getting anxious, which, you know, when you start running into problems, you're going to get anxious. That's, it's going to happen. This, when you put it in perspective, look, this is what's going on. Is it really that bad? You'd be able to lower that anxiety level. Catastrophizing this downward spiral. Taking a, okay, I just got a counseling statement from my uh, squad leader for being late to formation and just down spiraling all the way down to I'm going to get kicked out of the, the army because I can't do what I'm told. You know what I'm saying? It's just going from one extreme to the other. Uh, it creates high levels of anxiety, decreases focus, and increases helplessness. If you keep thinking about the same thing and going a step worse every time you think about it, it's just going to, all you're going to do is you're going to start feeling helpless. You know, like you can't fix it. Prevent you from taking purposeful action. The goal of putting it into perspective is to lower anxiety so that you can accurately assess the situation and deal with it. The goal is not to pretend all is well, to deny the, problem, the real problem, or to take away anxiety completely. All right? <clears throat> you don't want to say, okay, uh, we got a problem, it's, everything's fine. What we want you to do is put it into perspective. Yes, we have a problem. All right, but this is it. It's not this bad, and it's not this good. This is where it's at, right here. All right, so you can figure out how to fix that. All right, mental games. Mental games are exactly what they say. It's just games to, mental games help to build your self-regulation. All right, it's, it, you try to increase your, your mental agility. Mental games, compartment in, compartmentalize or distract you from counterproductive thinking. So it's kind of like if you're having a bad day and you don't feel like you're being very positive, pull out a, a crossword puzzle or something. Isn't that a mental game when you start working on a crossword puzzle or Sudoku or something like that? It pulls your mind away from the negative stuff and, and starts focusing on something else. All right? Mental games are use, useful, quick solutions when your thoughts are circling or you're catastrophizing. And uh, it puts it back into perspective, helps to put it back into perspective. All right, mental games like math games count. This is, this is the stuff that they taught us to do. Y'all can do whatever increases your, your focus. All right? Like I said, crosswords, sudo, Sudoku, or whatever. Uh, Alphabet games, categorized name, uh, games, just anything that keeps you focused from, away from the problem. If you're having issues, work on something else that pulls you away from that. All right? Real-time resiliency. All right. Real-time resiliency helps to build optimism. Real-time resiliency involves proving your thoughts false with evidence thinking optimistically and putting the situation in perspective. Real-time resiliency is the skill of fighting back against counterproductive, counterproductive thoughts. Okay, you have a thought, okay, my wife is cheating on me because she's never at home whenever I call. All right, that's your thought. Now, real-time resiliency is, you know what, she did have did say she had to go get her hair done. Or she's probably going to get her nails done. Or maybe she's out with her friend, all right? Real-time resiliency, just you counteract your unproductive thoughts, all right? Uh, my child doesn't love me anymore because he won't play with me. I just got home, uh, I wanna go play basketball with him and he wants to play on the Xbox, all right? Okay, he doesn't love me anymore. No, he's used to doing this for the last year because you weren't there and now you're here, it you takes time to get back over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, so when you're using real-time resiliency, you're taking your negative thoughts and you're putting them into perspective and saying, well, you know what? This is, this is bad, but it's not that bad. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's kind of hard. I, I'm trying to give you guys a brief overview on this. and I, You guys are going to get all this training, I promise you. Because this is coming down from uh, NGB, 
that everybody will have resiliency training every quarter. You'll have up to eight hours annually. And you're going to find out that this stuff is really good, guys. I, I mean, I can't, I can't go into the, I don't have time to go into all the good stuff about it, but it is. It is. It's, it's life changing. I mean, in, for you that are E6 and above, uh, they have an MRT, uh, Master Resilience Training class, that y'all might want to think about going to. Uh, it gives you a, a, a Romeo 8 identifier and you then teach the resiliency to your unit. It's a good program. Uh, you use uh, real-time resiliency when you are saying to yourself, uh, when you're, what you're saying to yourself is counterproductive, you use real-time resiliency to, to get it back into perspective or get it back on the right track. Uh, advanced levels of use is evidence, optimism, put it in perspective. Advanced levels requires practice, practice, practice. All of this resiliency takes practice, guys. And it's, this, is, this is something that you have to learn and then have to live. And once you learn it, you'll want to live it because it, it teaches you how to know yourself, know your emotions, and that teaches you how to know other people and, and how to understand their emotions. I mean, as a man and a woman that are, are married, how, how much better would your relationship be if you knew why she was acting like she is or if you knew why he was acting like he is? That's what this stuff teaches you, all right? Hunt the good stuff. This one here, it's kind of like finding the silver lining on everything, all right? Okay, yeah. We went out on mission. Uh, we got hit by an IED. The first vehicle was, was destroyed, but nobody in the vehicle was hurt. All right? Nobody got hurt. We got everybody out. You find the good in the bad. That's called hunting the good stuff. All right? Those folks over in Oklahoma a couple months ago when they had that tornado go through, all right? I, I was watching a... Uh, an interview of a woman on there, and she lost her whole house. I mean, the house behind her was nothing but a pile of sticks, and everything in it was gone. But she said, you know what? I can rebuild that. My kids are safe. My dog is safe. So, I mean, they had no house, nowhere to live, but she was at least looking at the good side as far as nobody died, and we can rebuild. All right? Hunt the good stuff. Build positive emotions, optimism, gratitude. Um, when you when you can hunt, when you can find the good in other people, right? It tends to, to build gratitude for other people, and that's that's basically what what we want. You guys, what we want to be able to do is is appreciate what he does for me. You know, when people do things to you or for you, we want to be able to appreciate it. Right? Uh, it leads to better health, better sleep. I mean, when you're constantly hunting the good stuff and you're always optimistic, don't you, don't you feel better? You're, you're, you're healthier, you sleep better. Uh, when things are going well with you and your wife, or you and your boyfriend, or you and your girlfriend, uh, don't you feel better? Doesn't it just make you have a better feeling when everything's going good? <clears throat> That's what happens when you start hunting the good stuff in everything. All right, this is a little exercise you can do. What you do is at the end of every day, you, you find three good things that have happened during the day, all right? And then think about, reflect on why those were good to you. What, what was good about them, all right? If you do that, if you start doing that every day on a daily basis, and it becomes second nature, you'll see how much of a more optimistic person you have become. Uh, yeah. Hunting the good stuff, it, just, it counteracts negative bias, all right? So when something negative happens, you, you find something, and I, I find myself doing it like during the day. When somebody says something or something bad happens, I'll be like, well, at least this didn't happen, or at least this isn't like this, you know? You try to get, you try to get more optimistic in life. 